In this presentation, we will enter an adjusting entry related to depreciation. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to be opening up our financial statements by going to the accounting drop down, going on to that balance sheet report. We're then going to duplicate the tab up top by going on to that tab up top, right clicking on it, and then duplicating it. We'll do the same thing for the income statement. Going back to the tab to the left, we're going to go to the accounting drop down and we'll find that income statement, our other financial statement report. Once that opens up, as it should be done now, I'm going to be right clicking on that tab again up top and duplicating that tab. Let's go on back to our balance sheet. So we're going to be on the balance sheet report here. We're going to adjust this to our cutoff date, which is going to be the end of February 2020. That's going to be February 29th. And then we're going to say update. Now let's consider our objective. We're going on down. We're thinking about our fixed assets. So the fixed assets are down here. Remember when we purchase the fixed assets, you kind of have to deviate from a cash basis when you do the fixed assets because they're going to be long lived assets. And even for taxes, they're typically going to make you deviate from a cash basis and put the fixed assets on the book, even if you pay cash on as an asset and then depreciate them. So that's what we're going to do now. The large types of things that we would purchase, so, so like automobiles or the you know, you know, the uh, computer and equipment and the furniture and fixture for us. When we purchased them, we had to put them on the books as an asset, whether we paid cash for them or not. And then we're going to have to depreciate them. Now, remember, when you think about the depreciation, you have to think about, do you want to, you know, record the depreciation yourself, calculate it yourself, do it within the software, or do you want to depend on an external, you know, CPA firm or your tax preparer to help you with that? Oftentimes, smaller to mid-sized businesses will probably be dependent on the CPA from our tax preparer. When you think about the CPA from our tax preparer, then you also want to think about, is it advantageous for me to be recording depreciation on a book basis, which will be different from a cash basis or from a tax basis uh, system? Because uh, if you do, then it's going to be a little bit more complex because obviously your tax preparer is going to need to record a tax basis depreciation for uh, the tax purposes and and then your book depreciation would typically be different why would those two things be different because the objective of the book depreciation is to be reporting things on a correct kind of basis on an accrual type basis using the correct matching type principle whereas the tax code has a lot of other things involved that they might be having accelerated depreciation involved in order to stimulate the economy and whatnot therefore the tax depreciation often has kind of accelerated methods in it above and beyond normal kind of uh, depreciation methods that you would have for the book side. So the theory then would be if you have book depreciation, it would be better for you to make decisions on the book side of things and therefore it should be different from tax depreciation. If you're a large company, you kind of have to do that because you're going to have audits and you need to be in conformity with generally accepted accounting principles. If you're a small company, you may not be subject to generally accepted accounting principles and then you might want to decide is the added information of me having a book depreciation separate from a tax depreciation beneficial or should I just be going with a tax depreciation even though that's not perfect for generally accepted accounting principles because it would be easier to, to you know do that with a tax return. So in any case, if, if you do uh, if you work with a CPA firm, we're imagining that's going to be our case. We're working with a, a tax preparation firm. All this all the equipment then is going to be tracked in the tax return. It has to anyways. To calculate tax depreciation and then the, you can decide whether or not you would like them to give you book depreciation and tax depreciation if they would give you that service which you know they'd probably be able to do so or just be on a tax basis so let's just give an idea of the, of the depreciation calculation just to get a sense of what it is i'm imagining that we're actually going to get the depreciation calculation from uh you know the tax software from our, our tax preparer and then we're going to enter it into our system just as a, an adjusting entry and we're going to track all of the information, the depreciable items, item by item, not in the accounting software, but in the tax software. That's what I would imagine uh, to be the case here. But just to get an idea, we, we would take the, in this case, we have 148,000. And let's say the depreciable life was, let's just, let's just say 10 years, just to make it around. So this is going to be straight line depreciation divided by 10. That would be 14,800. And then we're going to divide this by... 12 months that would be for a year divided by 12 and that would be kind of similar to straight line type of depreciation if it were, were like a 10 year uh, type of item now that's too simplified note 
because we would have to basically depreciate each line item might have a different depreciable time period we purchased them on different time periods do we want to account for partial years or partial month partial periods or not do we want to and so there's different methods and do we want to use a straight line or do we want to use something like a double declining method but what you want to know understand is basically the, the straight line is what everything else is kind of built on and that's all we're really doing we're saying hey look i'm going to take this thing that we purchased i'm going to put it on the books as an investment as an asset and then we're going to expense it over the useful life the the baseline method that you would use to do that if you if you were going to just figure it out yourself you'd say hmm well why don't i just take the number of years it's going to be and divide the number of periods into it and then i'll just kind of apply the same amount over and that's going to be the baseline and then you could go from there and talk about other methods like the double declining method uh, and, and accelerated type of methods from there. So we're going to assume, hey, that we got this uh, adjustment from our uh, tax preparer, our CPA firm that's going to give it to us periodically by entering this data into this tax software because they have to do that anyways to enter it line by line into the, into the software to calculate tax depreciation. So they're going to give us the depreciation adjustment number, which is going to be 1,762. And so we're going to enter the journal entry, which will create an a accumulated depreciation on this side and the related depreciation expense on the income statement side. Let's see what that would look like. We're going to go back to the first tab over here. We're going to go to the accounting dropdown. We're going to go down to their reports. We're going to look for those financial statements again or the journal entry. We're looking for the journal entry. So we're going to go down to the journal report. We're going to be opening up the journal report because that's where we have the add new journal button, which is the one we want to be in. So we're going to go to the add new journal. I'm going to hold down control and and uh, go up a little bit. So we're at the one, two, five on the zoom function. And then we're going to go to the narration. This is going to be ADJ entry, adjusting entry. All adjusting entries will be as of the end of the time period at the end, in this case of February. And then we're going to go down and just say, and this is the state, once you know what the, what the amount is uh, for the adjusting entry for depreciation, it's a really straightforward journal entry. We're going to debit depreciation expense. So depreciation expense. And again, they gave us the number we're imagining. We're getting the number from the CPA firm of 1,762 or the tax preparation company. Uh, and then or firm and then we're going to say the other side is going to go to accumulated depreciation so it should be some kind of fixed asset let's see if we have one here i'm looking for the assets here's the equipment and then it says less accumulated depreciation that's the one we want the accumulated depreciation now we could break this out notice they got a separate one for the computer and office and then we have one down here related to vehicles so you could kind of think about you know, do you want a separate accumulated depreciation for for each section of the property plants and equipment, or you can record the accumulated depreciation basically as one lump sum. It just depends how you want to uh, report that. I'm going to report just one accumulated depreciation account uh, here. So we're going to say this is going to be it. It's going to be the 1762. So that's it. Let's go ahead and save that. See if it does what we would expect. I'm going to go ahead and post this. And then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. And so I'm going to update the balance sheet up top. So we'll update it, get this thing up to date. So, and then we're going to go down and say that uh, now we have the, the compute, computer and equipment, the furniture and fixture, and then we have the accumulated depreciation. Now, again, it says accumulated depreciation related to the computer and office equipment. So I might want to kind of delete that and just record this as accumulated depreciation total and that'll bring this net down. So how would we do that? Let's go back to the first tab. Let's go to the accounting dropdown and let's go on down to the chart of accounts. And let's see if we can edit just, you know, the name of that account. So I'm gonna go down to, this is gonna be an asset. Let's go to the asset type of accounts up top. So we'll just be considering the asset type of accounts. This is a contra asset, but it should still be in here somewhere. And here it is. Let's see if we can edit this account. So I just click on it to edit it and I'm just gonna delete the, the end part here. So it's just gonna be less accumulated depreciation. Then I'm gonna say save and let's go back to the balance sheet and update the balance sheet. And then we can scroll down and see what we have here. So, so now we have the 125 plus the 23,000 minus the 1,762 gives us the book value 
being the 146 238. So now this gives us, you know, how much we paid for it, as well as the estimate of how much has been, you know, uh, used or expired. And that gives us then the book value. On the income statement side of things, we're going to go to the income statement and update the income statement and scroll on down. We should have a depreciation expense down here now. There's a depreciation expense increasing the expense and decreasing the net income. And notice that many of the adjusting entries will actually usually increase the expenses because we're typically dealing with expenses more than income. So we, we dealt with some that increased income, but a lot of them, there's more expenses than income. Will be, will, will be increasing the expense and decreasing the net income. So when you get into the, to the adjusting entries, you may kind of expect that whatever your net income number is, it might be lower <laughs> after you do some of the adjusting entries, including things like the uh, depreciation adjusting entry. So that's it for now. Let's get out of here.